When it comes to the world of off-road and four-wheel drive, I've always been into old school tech. Maybe tech is the wrong word, but old school equipment, body on frame construction, solid axles, a low range transfer case, and that is becoming more and more rare in 2022. And right when I was about to give up hope, a company called Ineos produced one of the coolest new four wheel drives I've ever seen. And it is coming to the States sooner than you might expect. Now, I had never heard of Ineos until a couple of years ago when they first teased the Grenadier, but Ineos is the largest company you probably haven't heard of. They're based out of the UK. They are an extremely prominent petrochemical company, and they are associated with all these brands. Now, the guy who runs Ineos is a gentleman named Sir Jim Ratcliffe. And well, the idea of a basic utilitarian four wheel drive came out of the best possible places. And when I mean the best possible of places, I do mean the best possible of places. You see, Sir Jim was sitting around in his local pub and said, you know what I miss? The old school squared off four wheel drive. And so he said, why don't, why don't we build that? That's a brilliant idea. And I've had a lot of good ideas in bars, but of course they don't have, let's be honest, the billions of dollars behind me to, to make it happen, but he does. So he did. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, it does look a little bit like certain other four wheel drives, such as the Land Rover Defenders, the Mercedes G, maybe even a little bit of old Jeep CJ in there. That is not a coincidence because the best old school four wheel drives are modeled after other old school four wheel drives. Look at like the original series one Land Rover that was based off of an old school Willys World War II Jeep. Same thing with like the original Toyota FJ that turned into the Land Cruiser also had bases in the Jeep. And this, while it's ground up new, but it's got kind of the greatest hits of all of them in one, which I think is so cool. Let's take a detailed look at the design. The bumper in the Grenadier is separate from the body, and this is a great thing for fans of old school off-road because it means the bumper is customizable. You don't have to go cutting into the body like you might have to on a Toyota 4Runner to change the bumper. They're also gonna have an optional included winch in the front. Very old school, very rugged. And on the final production model, this is going to be metal. And let's take a look at the headlights and the grill. Simple round LED headlights with this really cool halo daytime running light pattern. Now this is composed of your high beams, your low beams, and an integrated fog light. And then in the center of the grill is an off-road light, which comes on with the high beams. Pretty cool stuff. Now, much like the old series Land Rovers or the later Defenders, it does have this simple clamshell hood, which is pretty cool, but I love the perfectly flat fenders. If you're out on the trail, right, you need a place to rest your air compressor. Put that down there. You've got a coffee cup, put that on there. Maybe some tools. This is a fantastic thing, which a lot of modern SUVs and off-roaders have gone away from. Now the side of the Ineos Grenadier, we actually find rain gutters, which is a feature from old vehicles that I totally miss. These went away and it's back, baby. Now above that, you might expect to find an Alpine window, but what they've incorporated here is something arguably more useful. This is pretty cool. This is a grab handle. So for example, if you wanted to get up to the roof, you can put your foot on the tire, grab this nice and sturdy, and then hoist yourself up. You have rooftop tent up here. You've got all your accessories easy to get to. You can also use these as tie down points. Fantastic idea. There's one in the rear and there's even one in the middle of the Ineos. At the back of the Grenadier are these perfectly round tail lights. Round is good, but let's do more round folks. This is, this is a, just a simple basic design that looks great and is very functional. And this matches of course the round motive in the front with the headlights. Now along back, full size spare tire mounted in the back with a storage cubby there, pretty cool, lockable. Um, and next to that, of course, you do have a ladder. Now this one is a very early pre-production, but ultimately with the ladder, you're gonna be able to climb on up there, get to your accessories. And then down low here, we have another separate bumper from the body with recovery points and they painted them red, which of course is better than black. Now in the back of the Grenadier, we see something very cool. It has a little tiny access door. And then of course, your larger main door. And the idea behind this is, right, if you are in a tight parking spot, if you just wanna drop off some groceries, open up the small door, but then if you've got bigger items to fill, um, use the main door. I can only think of one other vehicle that has the same configuration. Let me know in the comments section if you know what that is. But it's, um, well, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with Hill Suzu, uh, but, <laughs> 
Very cool setup, lots of space in the back. Now in regards of towing, the team has told me that this vehicle can tow up to 7,700 pounds, which is a huge amount of weight. Now a vehicle that looks as rugged and simple as this, you might open the hood and expect to see some tidy, clattery, low-powered diesel engine, but what Ineos has done is partner with BMW and use probably one of the greatest straight sixes of the modern era, the B58. Now this is a three liter inline six turbocharged. It's a very similar engine to what you'd find in like the BMW X5, heck it's even in the Toyota Supra. And if Toyota uses it, they've, they've probably done quite a bit of testing to make sure it's up to snuff, but they've actually worked with BMW for a specific application in the Grenadier. So it might not be as powerful as something like an X5 with the same engine, but they've tuned it for low end torque for off-road use. Now we don't have official torque or horsepower numbers yet, that'll come later, but it is mated to a ZF eight-speed automatic, which is currently the only uh, transmission available. Now the platform of the Grenadier is about as old school, simple and durable as it gets. So you'll find a ladder chassis with solid axles or beam axles front and back. Love that they haven't gone independent and the axles are six lug and they're manufactured by a company called Carraro, which is kind of like the Portuguese Dana, if you will, but they do typically heavy equipment axles. So like tractors, big moving equipment, that's what they're known for. And Ineos has partnered with them to build the axles for the Grenadier. In 2022, it is so common to see vehicle manufacturers market their off-road vehicle with 18 inch wheels, 19 inch wheels, even 20 inch wheels. But Ineos told me that they wanted to put the smallest possible wheel they could on this vehicle and still maintain the braking uh, power that they needed. So it's got a huge chunky sidewall on this BF Goodrich K02 tire and a steel wheel in a 17 inch diameter. Looks fantastic, very durable. If you bend one of these out on the trail, you can bang it into shape. Love that. As we step inside the Ineos, it's a very cool mix of old school tech as well as some modern technology with a bunch of premium materials. Lots and lots and lots of buttons and some crazy gadgets and gizmos. Now the seats in the Ineos are by Recaro and they are manually adjustable, but a lot of cool materials going on here. So we almost have this kind of tweed pattern down here with this really durable, almost feels like neoprene. The seats are manually adjustable, but they are incredibly supportive for a basic seat design. There are two sunroofs in the Ineos, but sunroofs like I've never seen before. There's one above the driver and one above the passenger and they're lift out panels. So you can see they move up and down and then they kind of latch into position in a higher placement like that so you can get a little ventilation or you can remove them completely. The coolest part about the interior of the Grenadier in my opinion is this overhead switch panel and check out some of the awesome buttons. So first of all at the front of the panel you have uh, interior lights and everything is very aeronautic inspired, very industrial but uh, for example you've got your dome lights and you can do your interior light settings there. Behind that exterior lights with manual adjustments for the headlight level. So if you're towing a big trailer you don't want to be blinding people you can swivel that knob. Very clever. Next to that we do have a couple of off-road assistance buttons including electronic stability control off and a hill descent control. But behind that well, this is where things get really exciting. So there's an off-road mode and there's even a waiting mode. So for example, this turns all of the exterior stuff off that might be annoying, like your parking sensors. Click that, it all turns off. And then the optional diff locks. That's right, baby, front and rear locking diffs, e-lockers. These are gonna be optional on the Grenadier, um, but pushing on the button to lock the diffs. Now, all the way back here, this is where some of the coolest parts of the Grenadier from an accessory standpoint come in because these are all customizable buttons and switches that come pre-wired, pre-fused. You flick the switch, you can wire up to off-road lights and all sorts of different accessories. And there's even a second battery which you can flick on using that button. Now, that very purposeful and industrial aspect continues down in the center of the Ineos and they all come in these little panels and you can see they are very serviceable they've designed these little panels to be removed with these little screws but this panel is going to be for your climate control so we have heated seats we've got our climate setting here with an auto button and of course your directional zone below that check this out we've got some additional settings for air conditioning and recirc your hazard button is kind of protected here but it's right in the center of the dash and then to the left of that we have the window heating for front and rear defrost now it does have a volume knob Woohoo! You spin that knob and that's going to control your volume. And then over here, park assist. And to the left of that is going to be your start stop button. Very cool stuff. Now, this is the perfect kind of dichotomy that you'll find in the Ineos of modern tech 
and old school cool. So this of course is your automatic transmission selector and if you're a fan of BMWs, this is gonna be very familiar to you. You've got uh, park reverse drive neutral and the manual selection via this electronic control. But the four wheel drive control, the transfer case control is a good old fashioned lever. So we've got a high range setting, a low range setting and a sensor diff lock. And this is a proper old school four wheel drive. So you have a transfer case with a differential and you can leave the differential locked and unlocked. So for example, it's one of the few vehicles where you can go into low range and have the center diff open. So if you want the control of low range, but you maybe don't need the traction of um, the center diff lock, you can do that. That's very, very cool. And then flick it over for that diff lock, very similar to old school Land Rovers. In the center of the Ineos, you'll find your infotainment screen. It's about 12.3 inches and it's their own system. Very purposeful once again. So there's a home page, there's an off-road page, you got your phone, your media and then little settings. Now to the left of that actually is all of your important driving data. So there is no center uh, instrument cluster, if you will, in front of the steering wheel. What you get instead are a bunch of dummy lights, but the main driving information is going to be in the middle. So check this out. We've got, for example, our tachometer. We've got the speed. We've got the fuel level, the temperature, the gear position, the odometer. All of that is in the middle here which kind of frees up the driver to just pay attention to the most important kind of warning lights that may occur in front of them. Now, let me know in the comments, do you like this setup? Do you prefer to have a gauge cluster, but an interesting design? It does have stuff like a wireless Apple CarPlay. You can connect your phone, of course. So it isn't all that old school from a tech standpoint, but it does look very rugged. Now, the steering wheel in the Ineos is leather wrapped, very thick, and it's a two spoke design. We do have some control. So cruise control, but very basic cruise control. This is a vehicle that does not have a lot of the autonomous functions that you will find in a lot of newer vehicles. They wanted to keep this very basic and very simple. So cruise control, but not much else beyond that. Over here, we do have our volume controls. And my favorite feature, you can push in on the middle of the steering wheel for your big, loud, get out of my way horn, or there's a little two horn. You've got a picture of a bicycle. So if the vehicle in front of you maybe isn't moving as quick as you'd like, give them a little toot. It's a little like polite British Excuse me, sir, I'm ready to progress horn. And finally, right in the middle of the Ineos is an old school compass. The back seat of the Ineos is very simple, very rugged and utilitarian. So we've got three abreast seating also by Recaro in that si same kind of cool, aggressive cloth and neoprene material. Um, in the middle, a couple of vents, a couple of power ports, but it's a very simple back seat. Lots of room. This is my driving position at six foot one, tons of headroom, and you've got stadium seating. So the rear seats are actually higher than the front. So you get this great view out the front. Now the Ineos is only currently available or is going to be available in this cab configuration, but they do tell me a double cab truck is coming and they're even considering a three row version. What about delivery, timing, and production? Now, Ineos has an ex-Mercedes plant in France where this vehicle is going to be produced. And if you live abroad, well, we're really not looking at that long of a wait. They're saying that deliveries on these are going to start in the fall of 2022. Now, if you live here in the States, we've got a slightly longer wait. So these are going to start hitting customers sometime in 2023. Now, how are you gonna be able to buy one of these? Well, you can place a deposit at IneosGrenadier.com. I think it's about $450. And these are going to be sold through Ineos dealers. Now, of course, the dealer network is not going to be in all 50 states at launch. They're predicting right around 20 states to start with. Uh, but they're planning on partnering with repair facilities who are like Bosch certified and know um, the BMW engines, right? So that if you don't live in a state that has an Ineos Grenadier, you're still going to be able to get it serviced and fixed. We don't know pricing. Now, if I had to guess, this is just out of speculation. This is just me. I would, I would imagine, I'm going to take bets. I'm going to imagine like 50, 55 starting and we're going to have to wait and see on all the options and all the cool colors. I heard there's a number of colors coming, but I'm excited. I hope they prove me wrong and I hope it's more affordable, but I think it's such a cool vehicle. I'm really excited about this. If you want the ultimate in rugged four wheel drive and you love old school technology and old school durability, oh, come on now. This thing is pretty rad, isn't it? Really excited about this, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, check out tfl-studios.com for all of our videos in one location.